What's going on, everyone? It is a beautiful day in the garden today, and I hope you guys are gonna enjoy because in today's episode, we're gonna be planting potatoes. Let's go. All right, so a lot of you wanna see what the process is to plant potatoes from start to finish. And oftentimes I do a lot of stuff off camera just because I don't want to bore you all. But in today's episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bed that has not been basically touched in a full season. And we're going to go from what do you see now to a fully planted out potato bed. Basically what we're doing so far is we're taking out all the old plants, anything left in this bed, because we're only planting potatoes in this bed. I think it's a common mistake that if you're going to plant out a lot of potatoes that you want to plant other things with those potatoes. The problem is potato is like a very acidic soil. So by the time you amend the soil for the pH and you get that right, there's not a lot of other plants that really enjoy that pH. And because the pH only stays for about a season, you might as well just plant out a full portion of the bed with potatoes rather than have something else struggle along just because you want to diversify your bed. We're going to get this stuff all cleaned up here. This was some arugula and we had a few collards and stuff, a few little bits of collards. <laughs> Look gritty. It's good, but it's kind of buggy and stuff. So we're just gonna throw it in the compost pile. As you guys know, we have a finished side and a finishing side. This is by no means ready to go in the garden, obviously. So we're just throwing everything over here and that's gonna slowly break down over the season. And uh, I also I think I gotta rebuild my compost corral. The next thing we have to do is what we took out of the soil from the plants growing, we have to put back in the soil. So we're gonna go over to the finished side and grab some compost. And this, this is beautiful stuff. This is, what gardening dreams are made out of. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. All right, now we got this fresh compost. We're gonna take it and put it on the bed. Now I have not done any softening of the original soil. The soil that was in the garden bed is gonna stay until after I get the compost laid down. And then I'm gonna do a process called double digging, which is basically going to incorporate what I'm adding in with the original soil. It is okay if you take your soil and just kind of layer it. What you'll find though, is that over time, you'll get these really defined layers in your soil. And I like to have my top soil very well amended and loose for me to be able to plant it easier. It also allows for better root development, better water penetration, better aeration, things like that. So I like for my first two to four inches to be loose. And I'm not really working the soil very aggressively. I'm more or less just incorporating this compost in with that top two inches of soil or so, so that I have a really nice planting bed to, uh, to plant in. That's just what I do. So I'm gonna get this stuff loaded on here and then we're gonna just loosely incorporate. So one thing a lot of you ask me is the topic of crop rotation. You ask me, Luke, do you crop rotate or do you recommend crop rotating? And I've been on the record as saying that I do not crop rotate and you probably don't have to crop rotate either. Now that is sometimes a little bit of a contentious issue with some people because depending on your train of thought or how you've been raised to garden, you may think otherwise. Crop rotation is basically just the act of moving your crop locations so that you can avoid things like nutrient deficiencies or disease. My line of thinking is that as long as you amend roughly 10% of your soil, you're doing the same thing as crop rotating. And the home gardener has the ability to do that on a really easy scale because this bed right here, this single wheelbarrow probably is going to replace 15 to 20% of the soil in this raised bed. And so because of that, I've already gone way over and above that 10%. I'm already re-amending with so much nutrients every single year, so much more fertility. And because of that, that's going to outweigh any of the downsides that could come with it. As far as things like disease go, you know, you have like potato blight, for instance, right? Well, blight is born in the soil. The soil that is over there is the same soil that's right here. And the more you re-amend it, those beneficial bacteria and fungi, they're gonna go to fight for you. But there's really no point in crop rotating either, unless you really want to. For us, I tend to go based on how my beds or, are oriented. So I do occasionally move my, my potatoes around, but it's not for the sake of plant health that I do it. It's more for the sake of garden aesthetic and my overall plan for the year is why I do it. All right, so now we've got the compost added and it's all over the bed here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna double dig. And you can do this with even a broad fork. Broad forks are awesome at double digging. It helps to just penetrate into the soil. You're gonna wiggle it back and forth. You're gonna lift it up and it's gonna basically aerate that soil and allow for water to come in for the compost to work into the soil and really just kind of loosen things up. You can do the same thing with a shovel though. We're not flipping it. We're just doing like that and just kind of popping it up. That's all you're doing. I'm only going down two to four inches, wiggling it and pulling it out. 
that's it. It's really simple. Now we're gonna amend for pH. So this is the next thing that I do after I put down compost. Compost is really gonna amend the soil when it comes to fertility, but also pH. And now that's great if you want your pH to be around neutral. A lot of your garden likes a very slightly acidic pH to basically neutral or a pH of seven to anywhere down to like 6.5 or six. Potatoes though, like a very acidic soil. They like their pH to be right around five to 5.5. So I have a couple different methodologies for me to get my pH down that low. A lot of you know that I use things like powdered sulfur. I use powdered sulfur on a yearly basis to amend the pH down to a certain level. However, there's another way that you can amend your pH and that's by using things like peat moss. Now peat moss, I will use about every two to three years. The reason why I don't use too much of it in my soil is because it takes a long time to actually break down. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some peat moss now because I haven't done that in basically almost four years. It's been a really long time. So the, the peat moss is going to do the work that powdered sulfur would. So on the years that I'm not using peat moss, I am using powdered sulfur. Otherwise, I would end up with a lot of volume because it wouldn't break down, right? But I wouldn't be able to amend with compost as regularly. And I like the compost because it softens the soil it adds those beneficial bacteria and fungi, which are so vital to your soil, but it also invites things like worms into your soil, which really help to just increase the overall fertility and the looseness of your soil. So we're gonna add just a little bit of this, well, the whole bag actually. We're gonna add this to the top of our soil, and then we're just gonna work it out throughout the bed. And once it's evenly incorporated across the surface of the bed, it's gonna work throughout the soil as it rains and as we water and as we plant stuff it's gonna get worked in just fine. All right, so now we've got the pH kind of fixed here. We're gonna work on getting the trenches made for the potatoes. So the bed prep essentially is done. This is where I would usually turn on the camera and be like, hey guys, today we're planting potatoes. So everything that I just did here was done off camera generally. So now you're back up to speed. And if you've watched any of your potato planting videos, you're gonna know how we do it. So we basically take a trench and we're gonna dig a trench every two feet or so. We're gonna space our trenches out. You really wanna make sure you don't crowd your potatoes. I know that potatoes can grow in containers fairly crowded, but that's if you need to, right? If you have to crowd them to get a little bit more yield, sure. But if I have the space, I've got 50 beautiful square feet here, I do not need to crowd my potatoes. That's going to allow for the root systems to move throughout the soil much better, and it's gonna result in a much bigger yield. So once I've drawn my rows out here, I've got my rows spaced out about every two feet, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig my trenches. That way I know I have the spacing right. And I know I'm gonna hear people say, well, aren't you flipping the soil? You said you don't want, there's no real way to plant potatoes without flipping the soil if you don't want a hill later. And for raised beds, that's the style of gardening that I would highly recommend. You can do a variety of different gardening styles. Again, this is what I do. So if you like what I do and it agrees with you, great. I find this is the easiest way to grow potatoes for me out of all the methods that I've tried. And this trench here is gonna be about, again, six to eight inches deep. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be amending the soil now for fertility. Potatoes take a ton of nutrients. And if you don't amend for fertility, the yield is gonna suffer. And so we're gonna take some trifecta and then my secret weapon, as you guys know, alfalfa pellets. And I'll tell you what, the worms absolutely go crazy for them. This trench is done. We're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna finish all these trenches and then we're gonna get our potatoes planted. And it's that simple. We're gonna be planting our three favorite varieties of potatoes. We'll plant a Kennebec. We also have here, uh, this one is the lollipop potato. Typically we would go with a Pontiac Redskin. However, Pontiac Redskin has been very hard to get this year. And then we also have here a russet. So there's a couple things about these potatoes. First thing is that these are seed potatoes. Seed potatoes, as you'll know, are really important to plant because they've not been sprayed with a sprout inhibitor. If you have potatoes from the grocery store, chances are they've been sprayed with a sprout inhibitor because it leads them to last longer on the shelf, right? These have not been sprayed, meaning these eyes are gonna develop at a nice fast pace and the plants are gonna develop as well. Next thing is you'll notice these are whole. We're not, uh, we're not cutting them. You can if you want, but because these are smaller potatoes and we only have about three main eye points on most of these potatoes here. And this one you probably could have because it's a lot larger, but most of these potatoes are on the smaller side and you've got like three main uh, sprouting points. We're gonna throw them in whole. That's entirely up to you though, but right now we're just gonna throw them in whole. And then the final thing to mention too is when these potatoes go in the ground, we're planting them eyes facing up. They grow up like this and the potato is essentially gonna form roots at the top of this. The roots are gonna go out laterally, not down a whole lot throughout the soil. 
So it's really important you plant these where you want them to grow because that's where your potatoes are actually going to form as well. So these are ready to go in the ground and then we're gonna space them out about every 10 inches or so. One other final quick tip here is if you don't have eyes forming on your potatoes yet because you've got them a little too early, simply throw them in a humid location inside of a paper bag. Make sure that location is dark. They're gonna form eyes real fast. So we're taking these potatoes and we're gonna fit about five plants in here um, in these raised beds. There we go, just like that. The final thing you have to do is just cover them up. It's that simple. So what we did is we actually just made all of our trenches, put all of our potatoes in, that way we knew we had the spacing right and we could space out our potatoes exactly where we wanted. So now that everything is done, we're gonna go back and backfill. It's really simple. Just push that soil back into the hole where it came from. And uh, first thing that comes to mind is uh, Sully from Monsters Inc. Put that thing back where it came from. So help me, so help me. And there you have it. Um, a couple of these potatoes I gotta push down a little bit further, but it's super important to get those suckers deep in the ground because that way once they start to grow essentially they've been spaced out enough that they're going to grow into a thick mat and that thick mat is going to be all foliage which is going to protect the soil from the sun anybody that tells you you can get more potatoes from burying them deeper or hilling them up is simply not telling you the truth it's not saying they're lying to you it's just maybe saying that they're misguided or that they have heard this and then they believe it so that's why we planted them about six to eight inches deep. So once we got them all covered up, all we're gonna do is give them a good watering in, and about two or three weeks, we should start to see their heads popping up, which is great. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully you guys are getting out in the garden and getting in some short weather wherever you're at. So as always, take care guys, and grow bigger, bye.